show is brought to you by Coocullen Sportswear. Check out their website for great deals on teamwear on www.coocullensportswear.com or the Coocullen Sportswear Facebook page. Hello and you're welcome to the Backdoor Football Show. Today to be joined by Finian Hanley and Sean O'Sullivan. Um, before we get into previewing the games, I suppose, um, coming to you, Finian, uh, Sligo conceding the game against Galway. Um, so much, I suppose, to talk about it from a Sligo perspective, not fielding a team, but not ideal preparation from a Galway perspective either. No, Paul, to be honest, it's a bit of a disaster, really. It's, um, look, we all knew what was coming when they, when they, when they went ahead with this. Uh, it was, the possibilities were endless of, of, of who this would happen to. It seems to be happening to the, happening to the minnows at the minute, you know, the Leachams, Fermanas, the Sligos, the different division trees and division fours, um, even though, uh, the, the virus is, 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 um, more widespread in, in, in the larger counties, but, um, yeah, look, it's disappointing from from a Sligo point of view. Obviously, they've trained all year. You know, the league wasn't great to them, um, to Paul and, and and the lads. And you know, they're 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 in transition. Sligo, you know, they're coming. And Paul Taylor is trying to build something there again, uh, from on the back of you know off the back of school runs that they've had, you know, over the last couple of years, and trying to you know start from scratch because like Adrian Marin retired this year, who was their you know last of the main stalwarts from their their successful team. In the early 2010s so um it's not ideal that uh for them you know i, I feel sorry for them that that, that that it's been pulled from them you know did they you know the question whether they should have played or shouldn't have played i don't know the answer to that i think they wanted i i, I presume the lads wanted to play but they look they were they were an uphill battle battle with a full squad um and and you know with, with a lot of their team gone then they were going to struggle so from a galway point of view not ideal either, you know. They've again, they've they've come off the back of two kind of poor poor results against Mayo and Dublin, and and this was kind of a, a get back on the horse um, game to 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 head into a com into a kind of final against Ross Common or Mayo with a bit of confidence. And look, they'll have to tear strips out of each other in training over the next week now. But look, that's never ideal. So going in raw to a kind of final, and, and and when the other two teams are are, are a bit bit more cooked, is is not, is not ideal either. And Sean, do you think it's out of the question, like Sligo conceding the game, but a lot of people saying that they should have called up players, is that out of the question, really? Yeah, I can understand people's argument with that one, Paul. Um, look, nobody wants to see walkovers or forfeits given, uh, particularly in the championship, in any, in any competition, it dilutes it straight away, but we're in unprecedented times, and I can understand there's been a lot of calls for you know, there's been questions, why can't Sligo maybe uh, call up a few under 20s or, or try and fill the gap somewhere? But I, I, I think there's a bigger picture here in terms of, look, the players, the players' safety and, and players' welfare has to come first. It has to. We're always preaching it. We preached it from the get-go when, when we realised that these games were going to come back after lockdown. Once things were being done safely, protocols were being followed, testing was being done, we had no problems with games coming back. But as Finian rightly said, this was always going to raise its head. It was always the elephant in the room that this could and would happen. And it has. And unfortunately, it's now happened uh, in the championship and, and uh, Sligo have had to concede. I don't agree with them trying to round up 15 fellas or whatever they need to, to fulfil a fixture. It's not. I, I, I firmly disagree with it. I think it's, it's not right. Yeah. Paul Taylor would have been working very hard on game plans. He would have had a settled squad. Again, as Finian pointed out, the league campaign wasn't great, but still in all, they would have fancied a crack at Galway. Now, look, Galway would have probably have got over the line and had enough for them, but it would have been Sligo's big day, kind of championship, difficult conditions. You know, the management would have been going through bits and pieces with the players they have. And then just to, all of a sudden on a Tuesday or Wednesday have to turn around and call up whatever it may be, under 20s, um, guys who wouldn't have had any idea of what the setup was and try and get them right to play and be competitive in a kind of championship match in a couple of days. I just don't think it's it, it would have been right. Um, so I understand Sligo's making this decision. It's disappointing for everybody. We don't want to see it. Galway particularly didn't want to see it because 
Padre Joyce wanted a, a, a game under the belt facing into a Connacht final. But unfortunately, this has happened. It was it was always lurking in the background that it might happen, and it has. But I don't think trying to get guys now to come into the panel and into the team just to fulfil a fixture would have been the right way to go about it, particularly with player safety, uh, which, which has to be, that has to be the main concern. And I suppose the big argument here, Finian, is the all and semi-finals are going to be refixed if there's a COVID outbreak, but Connick semi-finals, they're not going to be refixed. Is this where the GA should have been a bit more flexible, even if we had to bring it in to next year? Uh, <laughs> there's no right or wrong answer here. It's very tough, you know, and I think at the start of this, you know, we always have, we have to revert back to to what what's going on at the minute and what what we're do what we're trying to do in the GAA. We're trying to get something played. Like there was no hope for anything back in May, June, July. We were dust. We were gone. There was a long winter ahead with no sport and uh, no like obviously the professional sport, but the GAA was 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 goosed really with what was happening with the clubs and everything. You know, but like so we have to realise that we're clinging on to something here. We're trying to make it as safe as possible. Um, and we have been, by and large, we have been doing that. Um, so, so look, we've had a couple of outbreaks now. Hopefully, you know, unfortunate for those teams, but hopefully we don't get any more. Um, and 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 you know, maybe if, if Dublin or Kerry get a get a shot of it, it might be a bad thing. But uh, <laughs> but, but, but other than that, you know, like it's 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 um, you know, we've been we've we've been clinging on to it. We have it now. It's there in front of us, and we always knew this was going to happen. So they have to come up with something. They can't just say. You know, sure. Look, we'll we'll change a kind of championship match, and then we'll change an All Ireland semi final and go into next year. It can't really go into next year. Everyone knew what they were getting themselves involved in. I know talking to talking to the Galway lads, they were just happy to that it was going ahead and that you know it wasn't about going into next year. Look, if we got a bit of COVID, we'd have to deal with it. We'd have to pull out, or we'd have to play. And that's the choices they all have, and they all got at the start. And I think, look, you know, this final is going to be played in the 19th of December, and then we're hopefully we're into a proper year again of pre-seasons and Allianz Football League and stuff next year where we can run this a lot more smoothly because we know more about it. So I don't think, you know, if they have to change the semi-final, you know, they have a couple of weeks to play with. I think there's three weeks, maybe four weeks between the semi and the final. So, like, that's fine because, you know, obviously an All-Ireland final, but I think the fact that we have Connacht Championship, I wouldn't be moving or, or, or shaking anything. I'd just play it on as we can. And, you know, if you have a semi-final to a final that's going from three to four weeks, or just three to four weeks break, then I, then I, then, then you could look at moving a week. But other than that, I'd say play it on. And I think every team is knew what they were getting themselves into. The real stickler in this too, Finian, is obviously the type, the quarantine time. You see, if if players exactly, need to go, yeah. yeah, if players need to go into isolation, Paul, they have to follow the rules, which is as of fourteen days. Is it ten days or fourteen days? Is it ten? Fourteen, I think. Fourteen, 14 is it? Yeah. So yeah. that's obviously that's where the issue lies. If 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 players were getting this and testing positive for it, and they could maybe isolate for a week, even do you know what I mean? That that yeah. might that might give uh, the GA a bit of leeway. But it's the fact that you have to quarantine for your two weeks that completely that completely restricts you in terms of your fixture. So you have you have to you have to you have to limit your movements. You have to isolate, and that just completely rules out in because trying to hold off games for two weeks forget about us because it'll no. just run on and on and, and on. You know? and, and you're trying to you're trying to like we don't know what's going on inside the counties. Who has the virus? Mm -hmm. Who's who's at a close contact? At what stage? Because one player could like. Seven players could have had it or had a close contact, and they could have moved into, as Sean said, seven, ten days, and nearly out the other side. And then one exactly. other guy could have just got it at the tail yeah. end, and then you're into a whole other bout. Yeah. So you can't just keep. You have to draw a line under the sand somewhere. Unfortunately yeah. for these players and these teams, the, the, you rightly say, it, Sean, the, the 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 quarantine time on this is the difficult part. Mm -hmm. We saw it in clubs here in Galway with Cartoon. Uh, Adrian Barry was a close contact. And they wouldn't move the game, and he had to sit at home and listen yeah. to it on the radio. I know, I you know. know he, yeah. he, he pissed off and all as he was, you know, excuse mm. the language, but you know, he he had to just get on with it, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough going. I suppose getting into action now in Connacht, um, coming to you, Sean Mayo, Ross Common, half one in Hyde Park on Sunday. Mm. Um, going by Mayo's performance the last day against Leitrim at State, not overly impressive. Um, but like looking at their half forward line first, uh, Sean, it seems to be an area that they're really unsure of. The last day started Jordan Flynn, Ryan O'Donoghue there, 
then Jeremy O'Connor and James Kerr come on straight away and they're trying to play Kevin McLaughlin, it looks like, in the backs this year. And it's a bit of an area of concern, I'd say, for Mayo going into this game. It is, yeah, it, it, it is, Paul. Um, to be honest with you, look, I, I wouldn't read too much into the Leitrim game. I know people were saying Mayo were sloppy and, uh, you know, they weren't at their best. I think, was it seven debutants, uh, James Horn, give 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 uh, championship debutants to? So uh, that's that's not going to just all of a sudden click into gear straight away and, and things are going to work out brilliant. They were in a no-win situation against Leitrim because they were always going to win. Whether they won by 30 points or three, you know, they were still going to be, you know, uh, I suppose, not criticised, but, you know, people were going to say, well, that's job done, move on. So I wouldn't be overly concerned, but... You were talking about the half-forward line. It seems to be an area, all right, where they don't seem to be as settled as they should be this close to Championship. I understand we had lockdown and we just they had two league games like everyone else to get ready for the Championship. But, I mean, I'm not sure what happened Mark Moran at the weekend. Was he out because he had been, he had been very consistent in the two games and all of a sudden he doesn't start. So that was a big, um, that was a big eye ra- eye- eyebrow raiser for me. Rhino, do you know who I'm a big fan of, but it obviously just didn't work out for him. So that is an area that Horn will be worried about because, you know, coming into coming into the game against Roscommon, I know it's probably on paper a game that everyone's Mayo, everyone is ex- expecting Mayo to win. But I'll tell you what, and, and look, Finn, you'll know more than me about kind of championship football. But that Roscommon team, they're they're dogged. And they won't give an inch to these Mayo fellas coming to Hyde Park. They'll they'll relish this opportunity of taking Mayo on. So I would be a little bit concerned with Horn that he's not as he, he's not as settled as maybe he thought he was coming into the championship, uh, particularly in the forward line. But then again, you know he can still call on some quality forwards to do the job for him. So, um, but it's going to be a completely di- uh, different kettle of fish facing Ross Common on on, on Sunday. Yeah, and looking at Ross Common Finian, Connor Daly looks to be out through injury, um, not confirmed yet. But like they're unsure on their team as well because the Mertas didn't start against Irma and um, they played their second team against Cavan. Um and Carl Craig's looked to be playing centre back, so like hard to know what Ross Common team will start as well. Yeah, I I wouldn't read too much into the last you know, last weekend, obviously, with Mayo and Leitrim, as Sean says, I wouldn't read too much into the league because I think I think manager, a lot of managers had a plan for this time of year. I know it's way down the track. Obviously, we're six months later than we should have been. But I think, you know, James Horn and Anthony Cunningham would have had plans to try lads out in different places. And in fairness to a lot of managers, they've stuck to it. They haven't panicked and said, Christ, we're into a championship now. And in a few weeks, it's a quick championship. We need to just throw in the lads we always had. They've kind of tried lads out in the last two league games, um, and, and Mayo did it again the last day. I don't do. I think that's their settled team. No, I don't. I think Horn was giving lads the run that deserved it, maybe in training and stuff. And he had always envisaged doing that at this stage of the league, whether it was back in April, March, April, or it's now. So you know, fair play to them for that. But um, Ross Common, Ross Common, as Sean says, they're dogged. You know, like if they if they have Kieran Murta, Jeremy Murta, and Connor Cox up front. Like that's a disaster for any full back line. Like mm. you know, that's a blood pressure issue straight away for a corner back. Um, like you wouldn't like fancy that. And if the weather's anyway good and these guys get you know and the grass is cut, these lads will be licking their lips. Connor Cox especially is a handful because he's he's a different. Sean I know a lot about him from you know from from being down in Kerry. He you know he's strong. He can kick left foot, right foot. And Jeremy Mert is one of the best forwards in the country. So they have a lot going from. And then their half forward line is interesting in. You know, the half forward line in, in Roscommon is always interesting because they always have, they can rotate lads between midfield and the half forward line and they have got the fittest half forwards in the country. They're up and down, you know, Devaney can play there. Kilroy, like they're they're very, very fit in that department uh, and they've got three potent scorers then up front. So um, obviously Donny Smith as well, who's been on fire. Mm. So look, they're going to give Mayo buckets of it. I do think though, I think, you know, there's a little bit different, a little bit of a difference with this Mayo team this year. Um, I think Horn is looking at Mayo at the minute. You know, Horn has went away for a couple of years and studied different games. From what I'm seeing from him now, he's he's ripped up the traditional playbook of your number on your back. You know, you know by so- signs of that are, are Stephen Cohen a full back. So he picked Stephen Cohen a full back the last day, who's not a full back, but obviously knew that Leitrim would retract a man 
or retract a couple of men and Stephen then would be able to press the kickouts as another midfield option. And Connor Loftus then, when they were pressing forward, if he found himself in an advanced position, he's a natural forward. So if they did turn over the ball, a guy to take a score. So you're seeing that um, you're seeing that with James Horn this year. Um, and, and the other thing to point out with Mayo is that they're, they're heroes from last year that got them, you know, to the semi-final or whatever it is. James Carr sub, um, you know, Fiona McDonough sub, um, and 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 um, um, Cohen, the other Cohen, Darren Cohen, who was who was the star last year, find it very hard to get in. So what he's created, he's created a very very good strong panel, and he feels to go all the way this year. He's going to need, you know, the key takings is the Darren Cohens and the lads who were maybe pushing last year coming off the bench for, for mm. these younger guys. So I think he has a good system in place. I think they want Connacht. I think they need Connacht this year. Obviously, they needed to get through to the All-Ireland because it's knockout. But I think, you know, they're five years without Connacht. And I think, you know, they'll have pictures of the Nestor Cup up on the wall. And that's their only, only, you know, anything after that's a bonus. But that is a must for Mayo this year. That's a very good point, Finney, what you make there about his bench. Because I suppose going back outside of Connacht when Mayo have got ever so close to the All-Ireland, it has been an Achilles heel of theirs where they haven't had that impact in off the bench to change a game when they needed it. So maybe he's decided, and you often hear this terminology or this phrase in, in sport, in all team sport, you know, do you, do you start or finish with your strongest team? Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's having those guys that you just named, they are guys who were mainstays in the team last year. Maybe he's looking at them and deciding, you know what, with going down the stretch of a game here with 15 or 20 minutes to go, where it's gone against us in the past and I've looked behind me and I haven't had the options Whereas now I have the options maybe to, to get us there and, and, and whatever about Connacht, maybe, I don't know, obviously Mayo have obviously their eyes on Connacht would maybe further afield that it's, it's been in those big games, particularly in Croke Park, where they've lacked that little bit of injection of something off the bench. And maybe he's just looking at that and, and that's why he's decided I'll start these younger fellas and bring these guys in then off the bench to get us over the line. Possibly he might be looking at that, you know. Yeah, and I suppose, um, Sean, like, Killian O'Connor, we've seen him uh, somewhat this year, kind of further out the pitch, probably looking to get that high-quality ball into Aiden O'Shea. But, like, that's going to be vital, really, you feel, because if they do what they've done a few years ago and kick ball in on top of Aiden O'Shea, but there's two or three lads around him, he's going to be bottled up. So, for Mayo to get a feel, it has to be probably somewhat a good diagonal ball into him. It does, but I, look, Finian played, I'd say, most of his career inside the full back line uh, and did so very well. If I, if, if I was, mar- I, I'm just, I'm just putting on my defender's hat here. If I was marking Killian O'Connor tomorrow, and he started drifting out the field, I'd be a happy man. I don't know about you, Finian, but I'd be mm. delighted to see Killian O'Connor out the field. That, I, I think that is what Mayo don't need to do. Killian O'Connor has consistently been one of the best forwards in the country. Now, has he done it on the big, big, big day when Mayo needed him? Maybe not. Maybe there's question marks over that. But if Mayo are going to have any chance, they need to keep that guy close to the goal. Keep him in around Aidan O'Shea. Let Aidan O'Shea be the foil for Killian O'Connor where Aidan wins the ball. And if he doesn't call the mark, Killian is coming on the loop to pop his scores. That, that's... That's what you, that's that's what a corner forward is for. They have young Conroy in the other corner who seems to get goals for fun. He stays nice and deep. He starts his runs from deep. By the time he's collecting the ball, he's no more than thirty yards out. He's a poacher. Killian O'Connor needs to be in around the top of the D if if Mayo are going to if Mayo are going to get scores. If I was a defender and Killian O'Connor started drifting out the field, I'd be delighted. He, Horn has to trust that he's got guys out the field that can deliver ball. To Aid Noshe, if that's the way they're going to go. Now, it has to be the right type of ball, from the right angles, from the right distances, uh, a little bit like how we played Kieran Donaghy when he came on the scene first. It wasn't just catch the ball and kick it in on top of Donaghy. We were doing it from particular areas of the field where we knew he had the best opportunity of either winning it or tapping it down to the likes of Gooch or Mike Frank, these type of guys. If Aid Noshe is going to be that focal point for Mayo and they're going to go that direction with it, which I think could could, in this type of year, with this type of championship, could work for them. Uh, they can't just play it route one. They have to be smart about it. So trust the guys out the field that they can kick the ball in. But you need your sharpshooters. You need your goal getters. You need your scorers, your chief scorers, in around that area to get the ball off Aidan O'Shea. If Aidan O'Shea kicks a few points in a game, brilliant. It, it's worked. 
But Aidan O'Shea is in there, I feel, to be a foil for your Kieran O'Connors and your Conroy's. If those guys start drifting out the field and they start kicking ball into where they should be, I think that's a one-up for the opposition. So I, I, I think Kieran O'Connor dropping deep is, is a bad idea. Keep him in near the goals and trust the guys out the field that they have the quality to deliver the right type of ball in. And it doesn't always have to beat Aidan Shea. Aidan Shea can be in there. He could be on a big man. He could be, you know, keeping him occupied whilst the likes of O'Connor and Conroy are making their little darting runs in around the top of the D, getting on ball, popping it over the bar into the net. They're, they're two very good forwards. Keep them as close to the goal as possible would be my advice. Yeah, and the battle at midfield is probably going to be huge. Um, Ross Common, you'll probably see Compton or Rourke, but Enda Smith more than likely is probably going to go out as a third midfielder and drift around there. Do Mayo bring three men out of midfield if uh, Enda Smith does become the third midfielder for him? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting one, I suppose, from what, what Mayo have been doing over the last couple of games with Conor Loftus. It'll be interesting to see what Horn does, you know. Like, is he looking with Conor Loftus to run the legs off a midfielder? You know, does he see the kickouts as coming out? Like, Tiger Roark and Kyle Compton are big guys, uh, big rangy guys now they can run. They're two very good midfielders. Um, and obviously, Enda Smith is there who can run as well. So, like, what the plan is with Conor Loftus, I, 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 I don't know. He's been doing quite well, but, you know, he's not going to be winning aerial challenges against the, the biggest midfielders in the country but obviously he's got a plan for that to, to, to have Matthew Rowan uh, and Jeremy O'Connor who's played midfield over the last couple of years as well as to come in there where he'll be there at wing forward so will he he'll drift out and you know he's one of the fittest players in the country so uh, it'll be an interesting battle out there I see three on three out there um you know I think I think the Connor Loftus thing is is, is interesting and, and what you know if 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 Ross Common retreat and Stephen Cohen, like he did the last day, comes out as an extra man as well, are they going to flood the midfield with with the likes of him who can catch the ball and he's a natural midfielder, you know, for his club and stuff. So, um, Horn will have have that in his head, and obviously Anthony Cunningham will be looking at that, I think, as well. But Anthony Cunningham will back his lads because because to be fair to them, they're very good midfielders. Like Andy Smith, we all know what he can do: drifts from deep, gets on the last ball, can score goals, score points, or whatever. So. Uh, I, I, I think Mayo will, will man-mark him. Um, will it be Jeremy O'Connor? Will it be Matthew Rowan? Uh, possibly Matthew Rowan and they'll let Jeremy go the other way. But um, there'll be an interesting battle there because Enda Smith has been, you know, driving Mayo or Roscommon forward over the last couple of years. Um, but you see, you know, a war of attrition out there. And if the kickouts go long, on a wet day down in the Hyde, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's anyone's game. It's down to who wants it more and, and the bit of luck because... You're going to have ball picked up off the ground, spilling everywhere. I don't know what the weather's like for the weekend, but, uh, um, you know, it's not going to be brilliant conditions. The grass will be a bit longer as well. So it'll be down to the, you know, Sean will know all about coming in on the crumbs, but it'll be down to the lads who are dying for it. And, and you know, I think Mayo probably have to want it a bit more. Um, and they've got good enough guys around the middle to win it as well. Yeah, and, like, we're talking about the Mayo young lads coming in. But they're coming up probably against, you think Anthony Cunningham might try and target these young guys maybe by uh, putting the dailies on them for Roscommon and getting physical with them. Uh, so. <laughs> Testing them out, Paul, is it? Testing their metal. <laughs> Yeah, it reminds me of a story uh, Jack O'Connor used to bring a guy from the stall. You talk about Connor Cox there from the stall, Brendan Guiney from, from the stall. Uh, Jack O'Connor used to bring him in from trial games. If, if he brought in this this new forward who might have been had a, a good club championship and he was in in Kerry training, Jack would Skinner. give him the guy. J- <laughs> Skinner, yeah. Jack would give him the Guiney test to test him out. Say, Guiney yeah. had won him in training to test him out. I agree, Paul. Listen, Anthony Cunningham is a shrewd man. He's 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 in the game. He's been on the touchline a lot longer than any of us. He he knows he knows how to manage teams and he knows how to get inside opposition heads. Absolutely, a championship game, Connacht kind of championship in Doctor Hyde Park, as Finian said, pro- probably going to be a dirty day. Uh, these young fellas from Mayo, lovely footballers and all that they are. I mean, at the end of the day, this is championship, and okay, they got over Leitrim without any real test. I'll tell you, they'll get a test on Sunday, and and they'll know all about it. But on the flip side of that. James Horn, he'll know that if these young fellas can come out after getting a real battle on Sunday off Ross Common, which they will, um, he'll know he'll have he, you know they'll have steeled them up a bit. But uh, 
Cunningham will be targeting those young fellas absolutely. He'll be telling them these guys are very inexperienced, which they are. It's 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 you know they haven't played championship before, um, and even though it's a different type of championship, it's still it's still a tough tough battle. It'll be a hundred miles an hour from the get go, and uh, I'm sure the Ross Common lads will be uh, will be trying to lay down a few markers all right early on, Paul definitely. And just something about my opinion, Killian O'Connor, we all know he's tremendous on the right hand side of the freeze, but the left hand side, like they look back at last year, Kevin McLaughlin had a chance to bring it back to a level game. And it's something they've struggled with, a left hand free taker, and they still haven't really found one. Um Yeah, yeah. Was Killian playing that game that Kevin McLaughlin took the free? I'm not too sure. Um, like, because in fairness to Killian, he's been quite solid, like, over the years, you know, like, he, you know, he's the top scorer in the championship ever, I think, but, uh, you know, he's put them away, like, like, Dean Rock takes him from Dublin both sides, no one really messes with Dean Rock, mm. it could be on the right-hand corner flag and he still takes him, <laughs> you know, I put Killian in, you know, not, not at the level, but he's in that bracket, you know, he can score them when he's on, he's on, now, he's missed them before, high-profile ones, you know, as we know. Um, but 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 um, like, have they got a left-footed free taker? I don't think so. Aiden's not going to kick frees. You know, Kevin McLaughlin's not a free taker, really. You know, he doesn't look comfortable. He doesn't look comfortable. I know. You know, standing there in front of the free, like he's not kicking them off the ground. He's just really. It's like a, it's like a before the match. He's just taking a shot, really, and 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 trying to get the eye in. Whereas Killian is proven, and he knows how he's got his setup. He's got his. You know, he kicked a wonderful wonderful forty-five the last day. You know, like if, if they can get him in around that 30 metres, kicking them off the ground, I think a good, you know, a fair bit to the right side of the post, he can he can, he can can have a, a confident cut at, you know. Uh, I wouldn't be overly worried about it. Like, you know, I don't think they're they're too bothered about it. They, they know they'll get enough frees where they need them. And you can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to win the ball in around that D, around Aiden, you know, so it's giving them the score. They're not looking for... Score, scoring positions way out around the right at forward or the left at forward position. They're looking to get in around that tee where they can either win frees or take scores. So, um, you know, Killian's, you know, he's, he's in good form at the minute. He looks sharp as we've seen him now in a couple of years. Uh, he looks hungry, looks injury free. You know, he struggled with injuries over the last while, but, you know, he, him and Aiden inside there, very dangerous with Tommy Conroy, you know, who we've seen over the last while. That seems to be a nice blend in there. They've got guys to come on, Darren Cones and James Cairns and these guys, but I think for the first 15 minutes of a game, them lads, and, and, and the other side of it is, is you know, like they get a lot of frees from turnovers. Their turnovers are, 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 are super. They're the best team in forward line to turn over the ball in the game. Their tackling is immense. Aidan O'Shea works, you know, works his socks off. Killian, one of the best tackling forwards in the game. You know, and Tommy Conroy seems to be feeding off those guys and the energy they bring. Like I like the last day. What I liked about them the last day uh, was their their pressing game. They pressed all over the pitch. Even when they dropped off, they were in the right at forward position. They shepherded guys into where they didn't want to be. And when one guy was pushed up, the other guy kind of came in from another angle to close it off and leave no options, no no sideline for the guy on the ball. So um, it'll be interesting if they're they're at the same the next day. If Ross Common drop off, are they going to press as much as they have? Because when they do press and they turn you over, it's over carrying. It's a free in. And that's where they tried to get a lot of their scores from 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 turnovers. So look, I won't. I don't think there'll be two. Or I don't know have they another free taker from the right hand side, other than Kevin McLaughlin. Uh, Evan Regan was trying them to, over the years, but maybe they have one. You know, a further bowl under someone. But but I think I think they'll be comfortable enough with Killian taking them. And Sean, Finney has mentioned he expects to be able to get over the line. Who are you tipping in this game? Yeah, I think it's going to be a real battle, uh, Paul. But I, I would expect Mayo just to, uh, they, they, they should, they should have the quality. Look, uh, they, they'll just have to match Ross Commons' work rate and their doggedness. Uh, look, there's no getting away that Mayo have the better quality footballers. Uh, and when you're going in against a team that you're expected to probably win because you have that better quality footballer, it's all about application, attitude concentration levels, dealing with the elements, all that stuff. You just have to be in the zone. If you can match or outwork that so-called underdog or weaker opponent, then your football should take care of itself. And that's what I would expect to happen on, on Sunday. I, I, as much as Anthony Cunningham will have Ross Common fired up and ready to go, 
uh, and to tear into Mayo. And don't get me wrong, I'm I'm not for one moment suggesting that that's all Ross Common have. Ross Common have quality footballers sprinkled throughout that team. I watched them one of the first games back on TV after the lockdown. They went up to Armagh, not an easy place to go, and played very well and won up there. And they showed all that doggedness as well as some very very good football. So. By no means am I, I am I being disingenuous to to Ross Common. I think they'll they'll match. They're, they're very very good footballers. I just think that Mayo probably have that better quality. And if Mayo can match Ross Common's work rate, which I feel they will, because they're extremely fit Mayo and they're very strong themselves, um, and like the physical battle, I I think they'll just have too much as well. Yeah, I agree with Finian on that one. I suppose moving on to the big one in Munster this weekend, um, Cork and Kerry and Parky Cueve on Sunday at half four. Um, Cork were competitive last year against Kerry and Finian, but are Kerry a step or two ahead this year now compared to Cork? Because Cork are play, have been playing football in Division 3 as well. Yeah, yeah. Cork are coming, yeah. Certainly, Paul. Cork are, Cork are, are the sleeping giant. They've been down in Division 3. You know, obviously, that was a, a kick into them, and they, they made light work of it this year to get back up. Um, they're not a Division 3 team. They're not a Division 2 team, really, when they're when they're in their pomp. Um, we saw that in the late 2000s, early 2010s. They won league after league. Now, they had a fantastic team, but Cork always produced, you know, really hybrid you know, ma- massively fit, mobile, at strong athletes, clever footballers. You know, uh, they had Donegal O'Connors and Daniel Goulings and Colin O'Neill's then who could who could you know shoot the lights out on their day. So, um, th- you know, their running game was always was always a big and and, and it was the running game really that won them the All Ireland in 2010. Uh, so they're, they're look they're 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 building that player again with the likes of Ian Maguire, uh, Rory Dean and these guys, Mark Collins, really, really fit guys with a couple of sharpshooter hurlies and these guys inside that can, can score. They're on the back of winning a minor and under 20. So they have a huge convertible coming. I know they've got systems in place down there. You know, they've brought back Graham, Canty and these guys to start putting structures in place to really catch up with the Kerry lads again, you know, trying to imitate really what the Kerry lads did over the last 10 years and get 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 back producing the footballers that brought them all that success. So they're coming. Are they there yet? They're, I, I don't think so. I think the form team at the minute, uh, the cute lad is, is going to disagree with me now in a second, but uh, <laughs> I, think, I, I think the form team at the minute are Kerry. Um, I think they're getting the balance right. Uh, I always liked their... Some of, well, I, I've liked a, a lot of their backs over the last while, even though they took a lot of stick. But you know, you know, going back to playing a couple of years back and, and seeing them in challenge games and stuff like that, you know, the Tygen Morleys, the Tom O'Sullivan's, these lads are old-fashioned, strong, sticky defenders. Get a hand in, you know, let you know about it when you if you win it out in front, you know all about it, and you're pushed out another twenty yards. You know, I, I think Ty Morley is that a fullback Crowley. Um, Brian O'Beglock, they're they're really tough Mark O'Shea style defenders. Now, obviously, that's you know they're not Mark O'Shea's yet, but they're they're that type of defender. They're good, comfortable on the ball, but they're they're the old Tom O'Sullivan, the old Mike McCarthy that Sean would have played with. They seem to be coming back into the Kerry way again. And on top of that, I think what they've done is they're they're mixing their attack and their defence. They're bringing the boys back to, to cover off those spaces. They seem to be very well coached in defence this year, but they're, you know, they know what they have up front then. They're backing what they have up front and, and they're getting lads up the pitch to support Clifford, Brosnan and these guys. So I think they're the form team. Um, I think they're the team to beat this year. Um, I think they're just at the right blend uh, with David Moore around the middle con- con- conducting the orchestra. Obviously, the, you know, the foreign player is David Clifford. He's inside. Tony Brosnan, uh, who's new on the scene, we know him well in Salt Hill. He's he knocks around up here a bit. Um, you know, super super footballer. He's got kind of the you know he's played with the Gooch over the last while, and you can see it in him. You know, the easy score that's on. He he looks for the next pass and sees his is there anything else on. He's that type of player. So if if, if a defender switches off with Tony Brosnan, you're in trouble. Um, and then you've obviously got Sean O'Shea on freeze and and lead you know leading the line at centre forward. So. Kerry have a lot going for them. I think Kerry will win on, on on the weekend. I think they'll win fairly comfortably. Obviously, weather dependent. Porky Creeve will play a factor. An empty Porky Creeve will be interesting to see as well. But you know, I think Kerry are the are the form team form team, and I, I think they'll go all the way to the final. 
And no, no um, pause. There you have it. Huh? <laughs> we'll, 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 end the, we'll end the call here, will we? <laughs> <laughs> you can send the cup down now already. Uh, but, um, they, are, they already have the stand up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tony Brosnan, obviously, in this year at Corn Ford. Uh, Michal Burns in at wing forward. Peter Crowley back from injury. Do you think Paul Ganey will be back in? the full forward line now this weekend with um, Clifford and Brosnan? Uh, the word is it, Paul, that he, Paul Ganey and James O'Donnell, who are quite close, but they won't, they won't be, um, they won't have done enough to start, I would think. They, I'd say the Kerry management will be happy if they're, if they're available to be on the, to take their place on the bench, to be honest with you. So, no, I don't see, I don't see any changes to the Kerry team that started um, both, um, league games against Monaghan and, and Donegal. Uh, Stephen O'Brien is back and supposedly has has hit a bit of form and training. So he might be putting a bit of pressure maybe on one of the half forwards. Michal Burns and Ronan Buckley are the two wing forwards. So maybe they're looking over their shoulder a small bit with with Stephen back. Jack Barry is also back available. He came on against Donegal. So he might be putting a bit of pressure maybe on his club mate Diarmuid O'Connor who seems to have formed a good partnership with with David Moore around the middle. So, but again, I think that Peter Keane will stick with the lads who have won the two league games. Um, they've done nothing wrong. They, 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 the scoreline, I, I, I think, didn't do them justice in Monaghan. They, they won 17-14, but they were 17-11 up coming into injury time and probably should have had a few more goals on the board by that time. The aforementioned Tony Braston missed one in the first half that day that he, he should have popped into an empty net. And look, they were they were much the better team against Donegal, but you have to draw a line under that because Donegal came down the road minus a lot of their big names. So we wouldn't be reading too much into that. But look, there's no getting away from it. Things have been positive. Um, you mentioned last year's Munster final, Paul, to Finian, And to be honest with you, I think that might have been a turning point in the way Kerry have changed their setup. Finian mentioned that their defensive setup particularly I know Kerry won the game, but Cork got through them numerous times that day for Luke Connolly's penalty was, I think, a run through the middle by Rory Dean. They got another goal where they ran at us through the middle. So I think the Kerry management team came away from that game wondering, geez, we're, we're going to have to do something here to tighten up at the back because we're, we're very, uh, I won't use the word soft, but we're, we, we can be got at definitely from direct running teams. So it's no surprise to me to see that Kerry have adopted a system where they are dropping men back. Their forwards are dropping back behind the ball, but they're really pressurising the ball. It's not they're just dropping back into space, marking space and, you know, dropping back into their in front of their full back line to protect their full back line and protect their goal. They're actually really, really focusing and intent on pressurising the guy with the ball. I was lucky enough to be at the Donegal game. I was in there covering it for the for the Kerry man, and I was in the in the stand right behind the Kerry management. And you mentioned the defence being well coached, Finian. Tommy Griffin, a guy that you would have played against as well, seems to have really taken a handle on the way they're setting up now. And it was constant from the word go, from the throw in. When Donegal run the ball, the instruction was very simple: press, press, press the ball, step out. And what they were trying to do was they were trying to stop the kick in, whether it was a kick at the post or a kick into an inside forward. They were just really pressurising the ball. And what really struck me was every Kerry player seemed to know where to be depending on where the ball was on the field. So if the ball was over at the stand side, over on the right-hand side of the pitch, there was a certain amount of guys there that were in that corridor and one guy was pressing the ball all the time. If Donegal switched the focus of the attack over the other side, same thing. There was one particular guy pressing the ball, but there was another couple of guys blocking the corridor in for an easy kick. So they've obviously worked on this. I don't think they just started working on it during lockdown because obviously they couldn't because they couldn't train. I think this is something that Kerry have been working away on behind the scenes. We didn't see a lot of it uh, pre-lockdown in, say, the first five games of the league because... They still conceded some pretty big scores in that game. It was a shootout against Dublin in the first game. I was in Killarney against Meath where they, they shipped a big score against a Meath team who, who were poor, let's be honest about it, and, and, and only got a point in the league. So I think this has been something that they've planned anyway with the championship in mind. But I think going all the way back to that game against Cork last July, 
must have triggered something in the Kerry management's head that we, we're not going to win an All-Ireland if we're this open. And I know they got close to winning an All-Ireland last year. Um, but I, I definitely think that they've tweaked this, this system. And the great thing about it is that, and, and you mentioned a few of them, Finian, when they turn it over, that's when they can inject the pace through the likes of Tom Sullivan, Gavin White, Paul Murphy, Peter Crowley, even our two cornerbacks in Jason Foley. Uh, I mentioned Tom Sullivan. These guys have just, they're young, they're strong, they've pace to burn. Against Monaghan, our two cornerbacks scored a point each, Jason Foley and, and, and Tom Sullivan, and our two wingbacks got a point each, Paul Murphy and uh, Gavin White. Against Donegal, Tom Sullivan was instrumental. He set up the first goal for Sean Shea and kicked a point himself. And Gavin White burst through the middle, even though he hopped it twice, scored a cracking goal against Donegal. So they're obviously, they, they, know, they, know, their ro- they know their roles and, and what they need to do when they don't have the ball. But when they get it back, by God, they're gone. And the plus side of that is they still kicked 218 against Donegal. And I know it was an understrength Donegal, but you still have that tripod in there of O'Shea, Brosnan and Clifford, who, even if, they, even if they're living off scraps and they're living off uh, limited possession, they're still going to rattle up scores for you. And that's what Kerry will believe. Kerry will believe that if they can limit a team to, like in these conditions in the, in the championship we have, 15 or 16 scores will probably win you a game. Kerry know that they'll have enough firepower to get 15, 16, 17 scores. Like one, one 15, 116 could very well win you a game in, in, in the winter time. They know if they can keep it tight at the back with this system they have in place, they'll have enough to win the game up front. And, and I believe on Sunday, I, I, I think that that system will probably choke Cork out of the game and, and Kerry's forwards will, will have enough then to, to pick on the scores to, to win the game. And obviously Cork will have some sort of a plan for Clifford and Brosnan, but would you expect maybe Sean Powder maybe to go on Clifford Finian and like how do they make this into a battle with Kerry? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I think I think they will put a powder or something. They'll obviously line up their best man marker uh, on them. Um, who that is, I don't know. Um, you know, you, you don't see a whole pile of court. They, they, you know, they moved their team around a good bit this year. Uh, they had powder playing in, out, you know, in around, out around the middle, in, in, in a corner back. You know, during the league in Division 3, you can try out things because you're so far ahead of the opposition, you know. So, they, 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 you know, they, what they found out about themselves, they would have played a lot of players, but when it's coming down to Kerry, you know, they're going to have to pick their best 20 on Sunday. Uh, are they going to drop deep? I think, I think they will. I think they'll have to. You know, because their 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 main strength, Cork's main strength, is their running game. So there's no harm in them flooding 12, 13 bodies back around the D and and playing a counter attacking style of football, which I think they should do, and try and get the Clifford's, the Brosnans, and these guys to start moving out the pitch on you know to feed off scraps and taking long range long range shots. And we saw the weather conditions in Parky Cleave last Sunday. The wind was 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 crazy. So you know it's 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 possible that you know. Whether it's a dry day or not, it could be very windy. So, you know, like if Cork can flood that D and get the likes of Clifford out of that dangerous pocket inside where he's so dangerous because he barely has the ball and it's over the bar. You can't even see the transition. It's so quick. Uh, they're very quick on their feet, the carry guys, you know, from from getting the ball to, to, to taking the score. So uh, I think they, they'll definitely have a plus one in there. They might have a plus two. You know, they might have then their midfield and half forward line sitting out around the between the 45 and the 65 as a shield on that. Uh, like, they'll feel that they'll have a chance if they cut off that that first ball inside. So, David Morton, as we know, once he gets the ball, he's only looking one way. He's not looking to kick the ball back to, to Peter Crowley or Paul Murphy or these guys. He's looking inside, you know, because he's such a you know fantastic kick passer. Uh, and the boys inside, once he gets the ball out around that middle, if you're watching Clifford, Brosnan, O'Donoghue and these guys, they are moving straight away because they know Morn is going to kick it into them. So Cork, first of all, want to cut that out with an extra man or an, ex- or an extra two men in front of that D so that Morn, once Morn has to go left or right or back, they'll feel that they've that job done. The next thing then is pressing, you know, once they get the bodies back, is pressing out around that D and getting out and putting pressure on the ball and stopping because Kerry obviously will have worked on their movement and playing against blanket defences you know, because 
teams have to do that and you have to be good at it to win all Ireland's now as well. So um, they'll try and move pockets and move players in and around that D as well. So I think Cork's best option is flood the D, get everyone back and try and run it. Mind the ball, mind the ball, mind the ball. You know, use the hand, which is what they're good at. Um, and that, that'll give them a boxer's chance. Um, you know, I, but I think Kerry will are, are more streetwise this year, as, as Sean says. They've 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 improved. Can they go toe to toe with a blanket defence? They will. Can they play the blanket defence themselves? I think they can now, given what Tommy Griffin and the guys have done down there. So, um, I think they're more streetwide, and I think they'll 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 have a plan. You, you'll see a plan in Kerry on Sunday for a blanket defence. Yes, so that game uh, is on Sunday live in RT. Um, moving on to the Leinster Championship, first game up, Westmead in Dublin, uh, quarter past six. Um, Sean, we haven't even seen Paul Mannion or Michael Darren McCauley playing for Dublin in the league. Um, you expect them to cruise through this one? Yeah, it's it's it, yeah. Look, it's it's just one of those ones, Paul. Uh, I'm sure Westmead. Um, you know, it's just the look of the draw. That's it. They 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 drew the possibly the best football team that have ever played the game, let's be honest about it. And it's just a difficult one for them. Look, they're proud men up in Westmead. They'll they'll go out. It's their championship game. They'll have a right crack at it. Uh, it's an opportunity for them to, I suppose, test themselves against the best. But like, I mean, it's 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 going to be all one way traffic. Whatever conditions are going to be like, they're just going to have Dublin are going to have way too much for Westmead. And as you said, you just named two guys there who we haven't even seen kick a ball yet this season. And you know, Dublin just seemed to. I watched them against Galway, and in fairness, now Galway, I, th- I thought were you know put up a good battle against Dublin, and Padraig Joyce would have been delighted with their reaction after the defeat to Mayo the previous week. But you know, when Dublin can just introduce guys like uh, you know Bugler there, you know, and he comes on and gets a goal and. Um, Paddy Small inside the full forward line. Cano Callahan is only, you know, really starting now to 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 light up again. And there's just quality everywhere you look, unfortunately. And 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 I think it's going to be a long, long day for Westmead, which for them is just unlucky. It was just the way the draw went, but uh, they they just pulled the big one out of the hat. Unfortunately for them. And I suppose Finian, the probably most interesting thing going into this game, Paddy Small's been playing so well. It'll be interesting to see which forward will be left out of this team. Yeah, I think, you know, like um, Desi Farrell will want to, you know, he, he doesn't seem to he doesn't seem to want to change anything that Jim Gavin had, you know, the best player plays. And, and that was the Jim Gav- Gavin ethos. I think it's Desi's ethos as well is that if you're on form, you're playing. So that, you know, Bernard Brogue and Jim McConnelly, they found that all over the years that lads on form played even though they were phenomenal footballers. So you could see one or two, um, you know, a Paul Mannion left out, you know, to come in with a chip on his shoulder, which is a daunting thing to think of, uh, yeah. that he's going to be he's going to be annoyed coming off the bench. He could kick one three or one four to put himself back in the reckoning, you know. Um, that Paddy Small, obviously, he'd be starting. He, he, he was brilliant in Galway the last day in, in tough conditions and he, you know, for a bally one. But he's been in the panel over the last few years, you know, playing league matches, coming on in championship matches, never really stuck you know, stuck the jersey on his back. So, you know, he'll be looking to do that now. He'll feel that he's matured enough now to to, to to take that jersey, considering that the lads that have left have left. So the jersey's up for grabs in Dublin. Um, obviously, there's a few nailed on players. Dean Rock here in Kilkenny. Uh, haven't seen much of Niall Scully. You know, he's a, he's their mainstay at 10. So will he be back in the, in the reckoning? Where's Brian Howard going to play? Is he going to play at 6, 8, 12? Um, who, who knows? I, I, I think he'll play out around the middle um, with with Brian Fenton, which will free up another kind of forward spot. So, um, yeah, there's there. You look, look, they have options. Will Kieran Archer be brought in? Can he be brought in? The under twenty kid who 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 was shooting the lights out for them. You know, I know he's been in training with them and and um, and doing a lot of the strength and conditioning. So is he eligible to come in and be the next Conor Callahan? You know, we're always asking. What's next for Dublin? Who's the next superstar coming through? And they seem to have one every right. every two or three every two or three years, unfortunately. But look, the mainstays are still there. Kieran Kilkenny will still boss the forward line. Dean Roth will still score the most. You know, these are these are the only certainties we know at the weekend uh, in all the games. Um, th- th- those guys, Brian Fenton, those guys will drive this thing on. They're the new leaders. Um, they have the medals, they have the experience. It will be interesting to see, like Dublin have been a bit slow off the blocks 
this year. I think COVID suited Dublin more than anyone because it gave them a chance to chill out, get fit. You know, on the back of five in a row, it's very hard to lift yourself again. And I think COVID came along, shut everything down, gave them a chance to recoup, recover. Obviously, the bodies were sore and tired. Um, um, and, and then they're back fresh. So it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll be very interested to watch Dublin on, on, on Sunday because, like, are they going to go out and absolutely blitz Westmead? Are they going to be slow starting like they were against Galway last week? You know, taking a point, shipping a couple of points early on, a bit loose, just saying, oh, we'll feel our way into this. Are they going to press from the first minute and absolutely go to destroy Westmead, which they can do? So uh, it'll be interesting to see what Dublin, there's a lot of interesting games at the weekend. So it'll be interesting to see what Dublin team starts. Uh, will Bugler start, as Sean says, who's been in fine form last year and uh, seems to have carried it on this year as well. So. Um, you know, the All Ireland champions, everyone wants to see them. So we'll we'll, we'll see what team turns up on, on Sunday. Um, another quarter final, Longford and Leash in the Leinster quarter final. Um, Mickey Quinn obviously leaving the Longford panel, but they got over the line against Loud um, last weekend. Leash then 3 3 in injury time against Fermanagh to stay up. Um, it's a hard game to call because you really don't know where both sides are at in this one. No, you don't, Paul. And I found a lot of the Leinster games last weekend were toss of a coin, really. You had Long, you had Longford and Louth, you had uh, Offaly Carlow, and you had, uh, what was the other one? Um, Wicks, Wick, Wick, Wicklow and Wexford. And, and to be honest with you, I called them all wrong. Um, fair play to Longford. You know, I, 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 I didn't think they'd uh, get over the line, but they did. And they'll take that into, into the weekend um, against Leash. Um, Michal Quirk, my old ex-teammate, is in charge of Leash, of course. He would have been disappointed with their league campaign. But I'm sure Leash will be ready for Longford, obviously. You know, Longford, as I said, will will be buoyed by that win um, because they probably weren't expected to do it. And, and obviously, as you mentioned, Quinn is a big loss. But I just think Leash will probably have enough for them. You know, Michal will, has been doing a lot of work just from, from chatting to him. And, uh, you know, he's he's been disappointed with their, their league campaign. But... You know, this year is a gimme. It's a gimme for a lot of managers, and I, I just have a feeling that Lee will be in a better place uh, facing into the weekend, and they're at home as well, I believe. So, I, I'd, I'd fancy Lee in that one to 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 get their championship off to a winning start. Um, another game then half one in the Leinster quarter final, Wicklow against me. Uh, me coming to Ockram, probably one of the worst places you could go for a championship, but. Um, Wicklow on such a high, you'll have to think within their own camp here, Finian, they'll only relish bringing Mead into a battle. Well, I think so, yeah. You know, everyone says that about Ockram now. I've never played in Ockram, but uh, everyone says that it's a fortress that you don't want to go to. Um, um, so, so look, it's, it's it, you know, at this time of year, going to the opposition's ground, you know, the home comforts can can work well this this time of year and, and given what's going on because you know what you're doing, you know how your day has panned out, whereas the Mead lads are coming down, you know, they don't know where what what environment they're going into, where they're going to talk out, you know, what situation is going to be, whereas Wicklow will be more comfortable. Obviously, Wicklow promotion, they're on a high down there. David Burke, the manager, has been absolutely, you know, brilliant. He's been lauded for the work he's done down there. I've talked to a couple of club managers uh, down there recently and, and, and everyone is kind of singing his praises. So, you know, Wicklow will be on a high. And then on the flip side of that, it's, you know, you have Mead who, you know, got relegated early doors. You know, they've competed in most games. Um, you know, are they going to have a big backlash now and say, look, league is cast aside. Let's show some pride in the Mead jersey and let's drive this on to a Leinster final because we have, you know, A, the players and we have the route, obviously, by avoiding Dublin to get to a Leinster final. So, you know, like Killian O'Sullivan, they have good players in Mead. You know, Shane Walsh, they've really, really mentioned uh, Donald Keoghan, super, super players um, in their ranks, big, strong guys, you know, who can win a lot of battles. So, you know, I think Mead will go and win. I don't think it'll be easy. I think Mead will go and win. Um, you know, I think, like, the experience of Division 1 and the fact that they competed in all these games, um, they'll be able to take a lot from that. They shifted a massive amount of scores, obviously. So, you know, they might be a team that might go into a bit of a, a, a blanket defence scenario as well, where they start the running game just to consolidate themselves over the next week or two and then try and evolve as they move into later stages of the championship. But I think Mead will go there and win. I think they'll have a chip on their shoulder. You know, it's it's they don't want to be the team 
not to not to win a game all year. Uh, Yeah, we'll just go on there, Sean, um, to the Kildare um, off-league game. Um, Jack O'Connor involved there. And Kildare, really, they looked a different team um, at the end of the league against Westmead and Cavan. Daniel Flynn didn't play, but um, they do look to be building a bit of a squad there now, Kildare and Offaly, um obviously got over the line the last day just about against Carlo. But Kildare be looking to win this one, you'd imagine. Uh, you would, Paul, yeah. You'd expect Kildare, uh, Jack O'Connor, my my former manager that we spoke about earlier, you know, he would have, his plan would have been going up to Kildare and, as you said, put a squad together. Now, obviously, look, he would have hoped to to, to get more games in this, in this year's championship, depending on how far they go on the Leinster. But I'd certainly believe that they'd have too much quality at the weekend for Offaly. Look, Offaly, again, similar to Wicklow, they'll be delighted with their win uh, last weekend. Um, I see Niall McNamee is still, uh, you know, still their mainstay forward and still doing the business for them after all these years. But I just think Kildare, Jack is building a nice little squad up there. And uh, I definitely think they'll have too much quality for, for Offaly on, uh, at the weekend, Paul. Yeah, and obviously Daniel, Daniel Flynn hasn't played either. But Derek Irwin there at the end of the league, he really looked like he's making his mark. And if they can stop... Back to me, really, as you were saying, um, it should be enough, really. It should, it should, yeah. Kerwin has been impressive. Flynn, I, d- I don't know what his story is with Flynn. Is it, is it just an uh, injury or a lack of form or what? I don't know, but Jack O'Connor will, will pick the guys on form. And uh, yeah, as I said, you know, when, when Offaly and look, John Mahan has, has you know, w- w- developed and he's looking to develop Offaly maybe into. A challenger again you see it's a difficult type of year because a lot of these managers as Finian said would have been looking forward to running the qualifiers you know but uh, awfully got their win last weekend but I just see Kildare having, having too much for them uh, at the weekend but I suppose just on that Sean this, like what is the story then with our, our teams now I, I heard I heard the Carlo manager was uh, John Carew saying that they're going back training next week is that the situation now where you've got teams out of the championship are heading back for for, for pre-season already. Well, uh, well, this yeah, you, you see that. you're right, Finian. Yeah, because in a, in a normal year, you know, I suppose you this time of the year you'd be back. What are we? November the third or fourth? You'd be back doing a little bit of gym work. You'd yeah. be getting ready again. <laughs> he, for he, the... he wouldn't. He wouldn't be back yet. <laughs> He'd be on holiday. <laughs> well, so so depending on where you're from, but you know, it's 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 a, gr- a great point because now all of a sudden you could have a team gone from the championship last weekend might take a couple of weeks off and you're you're getting ready again for pre-season for 2021 but realistically i mean look look at the amount of time teams lost because of the first lockdown they, they'll feel that they'll have a lot of maybe ground to make up so absolutely it's it's an interesting one that they'll uh, they'll be looking to get back into training as quickly as possible but they have to be realistic too you know they might have to give players a couple of weeks just to to come down again and and, and recharge the batteries and go again but it is that's a good point yeah good point just the other um, Monster semi final there, Finian, that we left out Limerick and Tip, quarter past one on Saturday. Um, Tip, in fairness, up eight points against Clare, look back to their best, and Stephen O'Brien and Jack Kennedy, um, and as well as Quinn Levin, Connor Sweeney. You'd still expect them to have enough quality to get over Limerick this weekend. Yeah, I, I, I do, but I think I call it, I'd call it tighter than it actually is. I think, um, I think it's. Um, it's definitely something that it's a game, an interesting game. I, I think if you have a, you know, a dog at Limerick came, Billy Lee has done a massive job at Limerick. You know, at the start when he came in, it was kind of Limerick where, you know, they were crap, they were crap, and he and he's been he's been left to, to do the job he was doing, and he's he's built that Limerick team. You know, they've they've done well in Division Four. They've they've they've, they've moved up the ranks. Uh, more consistent in the league, um, you know. On the last day, they were impressive again. They they're, they play a nice brand of football. They're kick passing, um, kick passing the ball. They've got some lively forwards. Corbett's a good player, you know, very good player. They've, they've you know, they've, they've they've improved a lot, Limerick. And again, it comes back to the weather and conditions and all that sort of stuff. Like, I don't think they'll fear Tip. I think they'll think Tip are a little bit flaky since their successful year in two thousand and and fifteen or sixteen. Uh, I think I think they'll, they'll 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 see Tip as a bit of a soft touch, and and they won't fear them. Now, look, personnel-wise, Tipperary have some have very good players. You know, they've 
Quinlan obviously Sweeney is back to the form that he was in a couple of years back. You know, Stephen O'Brien, like, you know, they've they've a lot, a lot of good players. Uh, O'Reardon, these guys are are guys that have, you know, been there and done that over the last few years, played in Munster finals. Um, they'll have experience and they'll, you know, I think both teams will be massively up for this game because getting to a Munster final this year will be seen as a huge success. Uh, and, and as we just mentioned there, going back training and a couple of weeks after the Munster final or a month or two after, you, you'd be in good form, you know, you might lose to Kerry, but you'd be in good form having got there and played them. You know, you know where you stand after that, you know what you have to build on uh, and it'll be a good experience you know, he might lose well, but it'd be a good experience for Limerick and Tip, given where they are in their demographic at the minute. So, you know, I, I see it as a, a tighter game than we think on, 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 on Sunday. I, I think Tip quali- Tip's quality will shine through, um, but but I don't see it being a walkover by any means. I think Limerick are dogged, and I think Billy Lee has done a fantastic job down there, given, obviously, their hurlers are, are, are so far ahead. They're, they're so good at the minute. Um, it's very hard to keep both going, but but Limerick are improving, and maybe they're they're buoyed by by what the hurlers are doing. And um, then the Ulster quarterfinals. Um, Cavan leaving it late the last day against Monaghan. Um, now coming up against Antrim. Do you think this could be a game where Cavan could underestimate Antrim, Sean? I have to be careful here, Paul, because my wife is from Antrim, so um, <laughs> not that she knows, not that she knows a whole pile about it now. But uh, um, it could, it could, but I don't think Mickey Graham will allow that to happen. Um, he's a shrewd operator. I have to admit, I got a good kick out of him on on, uh, on Saturday at half time and extra time. He his earpiece fell out, and he was he looked like a man that there was. There was no pressure on him. He was laughing. He it seemed he seemed to be enjoying the whole occasion. He he was loving the battle, and you know what? He probably he knew he had Monaghan. He he knew he had him. They were going into the second half of extra time, and I think that little laugh it was you know it was it was refreshing to see because managers these days are very guarded and they don't want to give away much. He was having the crack and the joke with his selector coming out onto the field, and I thought, she said, you know what? There's a guy that's loving football being back, and and his team went on and won the game and. I, I think they're in bonus territory now, to be honest with you. No, I don't see it. I, I, I know Antrim football is coming and it, it, it's, it's developing all the time. They got a great um, a boost with Caseman Park getting the go-ahead now for, for redevelopment. And all that is very positive. But I don't think Mickey Graham is the type of fella that's going to let his players rest in their laurels. He'll be driving them on. He wouldn't have had to say a word this week at training. You can ask Finian. Those Kevin fellas bounced into training Tuesday night. They know that they, they have a great opportunity here to, to get to a, an Ulster final. And uh, I definitely think they'll continue that form and, and they'll they'll take care of Antrim. It won't be easy, but I think they'll just have enough for them, yeah. The other quarter final then, and um, Fermanagh versus Down, the winner of this will meet Kavanagh Antrim in the semi final. Um, Fermanagh, obviously, not the best league in Division 2, down promoted from Division 3, Paddy Tally over them. I suppose you'd have to think. This is a huge opportunity for Down to get back into an Ulster semi-final opinion. Yeah, and I think it's a huge opportunity. I think both Cavan and Down will be looking at Ulster final. Um, like they have to be now. I think both teams will see it kind of like Tipperary and Limerick will see it as a huge opportunity to get there, you know, and have a free cut, you know, a free shot at 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 a Tony Gall, who we presume will be there as well. So, you know, from a Down point of view, Paddy Talley, you know, he was in Galway for a year. He's a Fairly shrewd operator, um, you know. He's 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 he, he loves his football. He's he's keen on systems. He's keen on um, on um, structures and all that sort of stuff. So I think, look, I think I think Down are a better team than Fermanagh. I think they'll win. Um, I think I think Down and Cavan would be a super semi final. I think there's nothing between the teams and and what that stake and Ulster final against Don- Donegal is massive for both teams and their and their growth. You know, so um, are they? You know. Down and Cavan, hopefully, you know, unless there's a, a shock, which I don't think there will be. I think I think Down and Cavan will get to the semi final and that'll be an absolutely brilliant game. You know, two teams kind of equal um equal status, similar type players, um, two very good managers. So um that that, that that'll be a humdinger and I think either team will just enjoy getting to an Ulster final because I think Donegal are, 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 are that much ahead of, of every other team in Ulster. For Mana, you know, the year hasn't been great, the league wasn't great, the COVID 
wasn't great. You know, you heard Ricey McManamum out in the, you know, on the on the news a couple of weeks ago talking about two tiers and the haves and have nots and stuff like that. You know, he was, you know, you know, giving out a little bit or whatever. So, you know, you can look at it one way where he might use all this as as fuel to his players and say, look, lads, you know, everything has gone against us. Let's throw everything at this and and see where we can go. You know, and and and. They, you know, they might they might compete. I think, you know, even if they keep it tight coming down the stretch, I think down just will have that bit more than a bit more quality, um, you know, in, in their team or in their ranks to 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 beat for mana. So, um, yeah, I think I think down will win. I think a down Kevin semi final, and uh, I see that 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 being a fantastic game. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, some huge games to look forward to. But thanks a million for your time, Finian.